Hey spirits. Need a card for Summer Wells. Summer Wells. In a general context, the Eight of Cups represents abandonment. It can signify walking away from people or situations in your life or abandoning your plans. It can indicate disappointment, escapism and turning your back on or leaving a bad situation. Thank you, Spirits. back again to a interesting story look how pretty that is there so I have here these are the blessed blessing spirit beans you'll notice that there's a red black and white one in there now the the red one represents positive the black means negative and then the white uh, that white bean is a neutral bean and these are what I call the spirit blessing beans. And we will be placing these at the site of Grady's place his, uh, for a little memorial. We'll do that here shortly. Love the spring flowers. They are so pretty. Well, folks, I want to tell you a story today. We're going to a spirit hot spot another spirit hot spot but this is going to be a little different from what uh, what you were saw in the other spirit hot spots and let me uh, just say spirit hot spots well they can they represent um, just different areas of uh, where people they you know their last breath was I guess you could say if you have to be morbid about it but that's what a spirit hot spot is is where the, the the living took their last breath I guess but we've got a story here today there's a couple of stories and I want to dedicate this spirit hot spot story to a fellow by the name of Grady Hill and uh, this video is also dedicated to the missing Summer Wells. And if, you, uh, if you've been keeping up with Summer Wells, or if you know anything about Summer Wells, you know that she went missing June 15, 2021, and it's been, what, almost three years. Went missing, and she has still, to this day, not been found. Um, but I want to tell you the story a little bit about... Um, as we go along here, well, we got a little muddy. It's been raining. I well, we can get through there. Um, it's just nasty and slick, probably, I'd say. Um, Grady Hill. Well, Grady Hill, he was a um, he was a good fella, actually. He was really a good fella. Uh, just unfortunately, he had some bad things through life that, that happened to him. Now the area that I am at here, this is called the Alcoa Greenway. This uh, this area here is where, oh, look at this blue crane, look at that. And then there's one on the path up through here. I don't know if I can zoom up through here. Can you see that one? <laughs> I wonder how close I can get to him where he says oh no I don't want to have nothing to do with you look at that hey, he's kind of now the blue cranes there we have the waterway and I'll show you that here in just a few minutes there so but uh, wow <laughs> all right so he's went on he or she's went on into the woods there but yeah this is the Alcoa Greenway um, 
there's a lot of trails around here, folks. There, there is, and there are a lot of beautiful trails, and it's a really beautiful area to go and to walk and enjoy the day. And um, I'll uh, just tell you that uh, you just never know what you know what can happen day by day to a person or to your own self. But Grady. Well, he had had a, not a, he, he wasn't wealthy. Uh, he was on the poor end of life, I guess, you know, when it comes to money. He never had a lot of money to do a, a lot of things, but he did work uh, when he was young. But he didn't, um, he kind of grew out of that. And a lot of people will do that. They will, they will just grow out of, you know, not wanting to work. Uh, so he ended up pretty much homeless. But he wasn't a bad person, didn't make him a bad person. He just didn't want to work for the corporate, uh, let's see, I think that, I was thinking that blue crane miner went through there, but I don't know. He just didn't want to work with the, uh, you know, the corporate uh, runner, run of the mill thing. But uh, what Grady would do, though, yeah, throughout his life, he actually would go and help people as much as he could. And he would, uh, you know, he, he didn't have a whole lot of family. So he didn't, um, he just didn't um, have that luxury. He only had maybe, a, I think he only had a brother from what I read. Uh, and his brother, and they didn't get along that good. So, so that was kind of not an option to be cl close by. Um, and I'm in Tennessee. This is where Grady was at in Tennessee, and his brother, I believe, lived in South Carolina, so he didn't want to live down there. Here's the pretty waterway. But um, Grady would uh, hang out with some, well, I guess you could say <laughs> maybe some sketchy people, you know. I mean, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't the, um, he was trusting, I mean, he trusted people a little too much probably, but... Uh, isn't that pretty? This is just a little water waterway that they have, and uh, looks like we got some people fishing over there. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's what people do. They come out here, and it's beautiful today. And of course, there are, you know, they come on the banks and they fish here. And the city of Alcoa, now they stock this little lake area here. And it's a kind of a out of the way area. You know, you wouldn't even know it was here. So Grady, um, yeah, he uh, he trusted a lot of people He uh, that probably he shouldn't have never trusted. And he would hang out with people that he probably shouldn't have never hung out with. But, you know, I, I guess that's maybe that's the way we all are sometimes. Let's see, look at that here. Yeah, this was designed. This is designed for the, with the the city of uh, Alcoa. And now this is another little fishing spot down here under this bridge here. And um, make sure there ain't no boogaboos here. And try to get a little closer here so you can see a little water, little water waterway there. Yep. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Yeah. yeah, this is a good little fishing spot right over there is what they say. Yeah, it's right over there. So, Grady, he actually, um, he would uh, go and help people, you know, like with their yards. And he would, um, if somebody needed their grass cut, you know, and stuff like that, he'd go cut their grass and make them a little money. He ended up, basically, he ended up homeless. Um, and he, and he wanted, he did that purposely. He didn't want to, he didn't want a house. He didn't want to live in an apartment or anything like that. And he had before. From what I understand the story goes, he, he had definitely had lived in a house here in, uh, in uh, Alcoa somewhere but he decided he just didn't want to deal with having to work all the hours that it took to pay for the apartment and all this so he just and uh, he would he wasn't a big drinker but he was you know he uh, 
he d he did drink, but he didn't drink a lot. I mean, he was you know, but it was he just didn't uh, he just didn't want to spend his money in an apartment. He loved being outside. So so Grady, yeah, like I said, he just didn't. He was pretty much a naturalist, and he'd he'd go from different areas. Uh, from all over the areas. I mean, he would uh, sleep in the woods, like on one part of town, and then he'd go to another part of the town and he'd sleep. And then he would also, um, he would go to the food banks and he would uh, get him some food. He knew all the places to get food. He knew all the places to get clothing if he needed it. He knew all the places to get uh, anything pretty much that he needed, you know. And uh, and there is a lot of help in a lot of these towns. <laughs> blue, blue herring. Don't know if that's the same one. <laughs> They're active today. Yeah, he um, he actually. Uh, and he would go and volunteer at some of these uh, food banks too, you know, to hand out food. So he was not a bad guy. He just he just didn't want to, you know, he just didn't want to deal with the uh, the everyday run of the mill like most of us go to work, and clock in, clock out, come home. He just didn't want to deal with uh, the clocking in and clocking out pretty much. He would go around town, and he, when it would get too hot, he'd find him a, a shelter. So he'd find him a nice little shelter, you know, that kept him cool. If it got too cold, he'd find him an area somewhere that was uh, that was that kept him warm. You know, sometimes he'd stay in the local churches. You know, if they had their doors open when it was really cold, and they do, uh, they do that here. But. Uh, most of the time, though, he'd just stay by himself, and he'd roam around, and he'd, uh, he'd he had him a stash of food wherever he was at. He always had him a stash of food, and he had him, and he he had him a little grill, and he had a little propane grill, and he uh, he'd cut that grill on, and it'd help him keep warm too. But uh, but he'd he'd make his whole meals on that little grill. He carried in a little backpack, and he had him a little. Uh, Every once in a while, I'd have him a little shopping cart, you know. So, uh, and he'd carry some of his stuff around in the car, shopping cart if he was going from one end of the town to the other. So I come across this fella here walking, and um, they'd been fishing. And his name was Tim, and he'd caught these bass, a large mouth bass, right here in this little stream right through here. Yeah, they, they put bass uh, in here in the the waterways. So, yep, very very nice. That was that was interesting. Yeah, this path out here it, it's just super super nice. You got some little flowers growing through here. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of blackberries that grow through here too, and uh, all through here. A lot of people come over here and they'll get uh, they'll cut. They'll get to or clip the blackberries, pick the blackberries. Boy, the blackberry cobbler! Oh my goodness, so good. Now this is the little bridge, the pedestrian bridge up through here, and the greenway back up there. Yeah, this is such a pretty area right here. Yes. And that bridge, it just goes in out, goes out that way, into a uh, just just <laughs> into a residential community back through there, which is very nice. And uh, of course, that's the that's the city right there, city of Alcoa, building the administration building, I believe there, where where you come pay the power bill and whatnot. Here's the bridge there. We got these little these pillars here. Yeah. Well, it's it's beautiful here, I tell you. And this highway here, it's it's really busy, busy. You go back this way, 
and that takes you to Knoxville, Tennessee, and back this way is Marable, going back that way. And in the distance, over there, the mountain range right through there, that's part of the, well, over that way, that's part of the Great Smoky Mountains over there, so. Hello, down below. <laughs> yeah, really cool area here, it really is. Uh, show you some of these beautiful flowers. I've been seeing these, uh, these white ones here. <laughs> uh, people call them, when I was growing up, they were called chigger weeds, because they'd have chiggers. And if you don't know what a chigger is, that's just a little tiny bug to get on you and make you itch really, 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 really bad. So get a closer shot to that, though. A chigger weed. It looks like there's a green fly on that one. And these here, um, purple bubs. I've, I've heard different names, but I'm not sure what they're called, but they sure are pretty. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yep. But chigger weeds, because if you walk through a field and you run across a chigger weed, you're going to get chiggers on you and <laughs> you're going to be itching and scratching uh, until you take a shower or a bath. Okay, so we are actually at one of the locations where Grady actually um, would stay at. And I'm going to get on in here. This is so pretty. And this is like a secret garden here, folks. Look at here. Just, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try to zoom on that turtle. It's setting up on the rock. Enjoying the uh, sunshine, I guess. Yep. I'm going to get a little better view on, on this <laughs> him or her. So we go in here this way, and yeah, if you if you wasn't really looking and you didn't know, you would not know that this area back here even exists. And um, and there's a lot of sugar canes back through here, as you can see through here. But this is where Grady would stay at a lot of times, and um, and look how just it's just kind of wooded through here lots of uh, lots of shade and um, but yeah this is where he'd stay at and of course down through here there's a this is a good little fishing spot down here too so but, yep and you can go off down into the trail down through there and uh, that'll take you right down into uh, a little fishing spot down through here. But yeah, this is uh, this is one of the spots, kind of one of the main spots that he would stay at, Grady Wood. And um, let's see, there's a place right over here, down in these uh, brushes, the the sugar canes down in here. He would uh, he would stay right in down through there. You can see a little path, and uh, it just goes right up and down in there, and that goes right into just uh, the wooded area right through there. So, but that's where Old Grady would stay at a lot of times in this area. This was one of his favorite places here to stay. Just a circle of life, little garden path here. Really nice. It's peaceful here too. Now, some of his buddies said that he'd come right here to this table here. And he'd have him some lunch right here and a little waterway right through there. But yeah, he'd, uh, he'd sit here and eat him some crackers and have whatever he had. He'd even set up his little grill there and cook him a meal. And not a whole lot of people come out through here. I mean, uh, the day's Sunday, so... Um, that'd be a there's more people out here on the weekend than they are through the week and he knew that too he knew when to come to a place and you know and kind of hang out and uh he knew when not to so we are getting close to uh, the location where uh unfortunately grady would no longer 
have any more meals by itself out here. It's so sad. But uh, the story goes is that uh, he was he'd, he'd go back and forth on the trails through here, but uh, he had actually had won him a like maybe five hundred dollars off a scratch off and you know how it is when you when you win a, something off a scratch off you know especially if it's something significant you know you want to tell people you know and well like i said grady was he was all about talking to people that he probably shouldn't have never talked to um but he had told some of the uh, other homeless people that he had won some money off of a scratch off and well uh, that was probably one of his biggest mistakes yeah so he had told uh, told some of his what he so called buddies that he thought was friends that he had won about five hundred dollars off of a scratch off and well one evening right through this path through here he was going to go over to a store that wasn't too far from here and he was going to get him some uh, he, was gonna, he actually said it from what the friends say he was going to celebrate go get him some beer and uh, buy some cookies or something for all his buddies you know always trying to do something good for uh, for people well it uh, just so happened that uh, he came across uh, one of his uh, one of the fellows that he had told and it was right here in this location right here and um, right here in the split of the trail here matter of fact and the fella that he ran across he uh, told Grady he said hey Grady I heard you got some money and uh, Grady said uh, well I didn't spend it Grady was trying to get out of it because Grady was, you know, he was street smart. He'd already, he'd already figured out what was going on. He already figured there was trouble coming. And uh, it wasn't looking good for him. So, just in that split moment, that fella that he told, uh, that he didn't have, told that fella he didn't have the money, that fella didn't believe him. And the fella pulled out a, pulled out a knife and uh, trigger warning folks a little graphic but uh, pulled out a knife and uh, he said told Grady he said give me that money or something bad's gonna happen and Grady told the fella F you and well as soon as he did well the fella he uh, he took Grady's, took Grady's life right here. Took Grady's life, took his money, took his billfold, and, uh, and ran off. And it happened right here. And this is what I call the spirit hotspot right here. And this spirit hotspot is for Grady Hill. All right, so I have the beans here and I'm just gonna spread them out. Right there. And that's for you, Grady. That's for you. And if you're in this spot, if you happen to be in this spot, this is the light pole. Yep, right there, number 2103. Can you see that? Yep. All right. Well, folks, that was our story today. And a very sad story about Grady, but, and Summer Wells. I hope all of your going to be safe out there if you do have a loved one well please give them a hug because you just never know folks you just never know day by day you never know what each day is going to bring well folks 
Until next time, this is George, and I will see you all down the road. You be safe. Bye-bye.